Just because the spooky Halloween season is over does not mean the ghosts are gone. Ghostbusters is soon to hit the big screens, so why don't we take a look at the franchise? But before we can start, we need to know, do you know who to call? The Ghostbusters movie taught us many valuable lessons, ranging from how sometimes it's okay to cross dreams. Just think, before June 8th, 1984, humanity did not have those valuable decision-making skills demonstrated to help prepare us for the futures ahead. Though it wasn't all fun and games, sometimes it was also catchy theme songs that managed to be a number one hit and spend three weeks in the top spot. The real movie magic was pulled off in the box office, where Columbia Pictures turned an estimated $25 to $30 million budget into $295.2 million box office run. This may not sound impressive for today's standards, but this was the second highest grossing movie of 1984. With a rap sheet like that, you're probably wondering when the president will acknowledge the true greatness of this film. Well, in 2015, the National Library of Congress selected this film for inclusion in the National Film Registry. Now, if you're like me, you have no idea what that is, but hey, sure sounds impressive. Following up the supernatural success of the first film, Columbia Pictures was back at it again with a cleverly named Ghostbusters 2. This film was able to bring back the original cast along with an estimated budget between 30 to 40 million dollars. The production for this film was rather rocky though, with the team working on various reshoots until two months before the release of the film, which is last minute movie speak. The rush production showed off in both the critic reviews and the box office. Critics thought the film was too similar to the original, and a lot of the humor in the new film was toned down to be more child friendly. In terms of sales, the second Ghostbusters film was able to bring in $215 million, which is actually less than the original. The lower views and less than expected box office sales resulted in Columbia Pictures deeming it a failure. You're a total failure! This would dismay the iconic cast from wanting to return for a possible third film. While the franchise wouldn't return to the silver screen for 27 years, Ghostbusters franchise would begin its growth in a variety of other markets and media. Two years after the original 1984 movie, an animated television show called The Real Ghostbusters would make its debut. This show would have quite a decent run going from 86 to 91, with a total of seven seasons. Fun fact, this series was distributed by the Coca-Cola Telecommunications. Yes, that Coca-Cola. Today it's known as Sony Pictures Television. This show would follow the team as they committed to busting Ghost. Eight years after the end of this series, the busting would go on to the next level. That's right, it would go extreme. Ooh, extreme! <laughs> extreme Ghostbusters followed a group of college students who fought Ghost in the only city that ever seems to have Ghost, New York. Running for 40 episodes, the franchise wouldn't have another big media hit for quite a while. With a budget of $144 million and bringing in $229 million at the box office, 2016's Ghostbusters was, as anyone who saw the film can tell you, a mistake. That's pretty bad. Now here we are in 2021, and the Ghostbusters are back for redemption. Some of the original cast has made their way back to Hollywood to try and resurrect the franchise. A monumental change for the series, this one is set in Oklahoma, which is famous for not being New York City. This one has been a long time in the making, though not quite as old as Zool's plan. The original writer, Dan Aykroyd, has had a script in the works since 1999. Now after more rewrites and delays than we have time for, the film is finally set to be released on November 19th. Soon, we will finally know if this will be the one to follow in the ghostly trails of the first Ghostbusters, or if it's set to put the franchise in the containment unit permanently. If you haven't subscribed yet, you are morally obliged to subscribe now. After hitting that, make sure to leave a comment on what kind of video you want next. For the Financial Fixation, I'm Dominic, and I hope to see you in the next one.